Hello, this is Political Forum for this Wednesday, February 26, 2014. Please join me in welcoming our guest for today, Alderman Pat Dow of the Third Ward. Alderman, thank you for appearing on Political Forum. Thank you for having me, Monica. Nice to meet you for the first time. Thank you. Okay. Uh, same here, your <laughs> Alderman. Political Forum is brought to you as a community service by CAN TV. I'm your host for today, Monica Torres Linares, a board member here at CAN TV. This is a live and interactive show, so during the next 25 minutes, we will try to get to as many as your comments and questions on air. So if you have any questions for Alderman Dow, please call us at 312-738-1060. Alderman, please tell us about yourself. Well, Monica, I am a, I would say now, a longtime Chicago resident. I'm originally born and raised in uh, New York City, but I've been in Chicago since 1978 and raised my family here. And so I think I have deep roots. I'm an urban planner by, by training, Went graduated from the University of Chicago with a master's and a BA from the University of Chicago. Um, I live in the Bronzeville part of the Third Ward, and um, what else should, should I say? I'm a tourist. How about that? <laughs> okay, great. Thank you, Alderman. Um, l tell us a little bit about the new ward map. Well, you know, the new ward um, is essentially uh, the same in its shape. It does, it looks like, I call it a little either guitar or trumpet, but uh, it goes now from... Uh, to Roosevelt Road. I start at 14th and State, but in the new map, I start at uh, Roosevelt and State and actually go over to Lakeshore Drive and to Clark Street. Um, I take in now parts of uh, Douglas. Um, I continue to keep uh, Bronzeville and a small portion of Washington Park. And I lost the back of the yards neighborhood that I had and also the Inglewood part of the ward that I had. So I would say it's uh, it's grown in uh, size, in length, but not width. Okay, great. And is there any new projects in the ward? Well, before I go to new projects, I will say that my old ward was um, about 94% African American. The new ward is about 64 to 68% African American. And okay. so, uh, you know, with the changes in the remap, with the loss of about 200,000 African Americans, or 182,000 African Americans from the city of Chicago, it uh, meant that in order to maintain the African American um, uh, presence in the city council, we had to make some changes. And one of those changes was the percentage of African Americans in each ward. Okay, that's interesting. Thank you, Alderman, for that. Do um, you want to go into the new projects? Oh, the new projects, mm -hmm. yes. Well, I'm very pleased to uh, talk about the Bronzeville Artist Loft that's located in the 400 block of East 47th Street. It was an old um, building built in 1929 that had been vacant for a number of years. And through uh, Revere Properties and Madison Construction, we were able to turn that building into a 16 affordable uh, artist loft apartments. And also on the first floor, it will be the new home of Gallery Gachard and uh, some additional commercial space. And I've had a chance to go through it now a couple of times. I took Senator Dick Durbin through it on Saturday. And I'm really proud of the new statement of vitality that we have coming on 47th Street. I think they open up in March. Um, and uh, we're already seeing new investment that's been uh, a catalyst uh, this building has been a catalyst for new investment, and we've seen other people come in and try to fix up their buildings, and that's been a good thing. Great. Thank you for that. What about any new developments? Well, I have um, another new development, which people are seeing now going up on State Street at around 36th Street is uh, on the old Stateway Gardens apartments, uh, which was part of the Chicago Housing Authority, uh, will be 108 uh, rental units. Uh, market rate, a third market rate, a third tax credit or affordable, and a third public housing with commercial space also coming on the State Street uh, side at 36th Street. So that's a real positive Great. for Thank the community as well. 
Sounds good. Um, Aldrin, we have a caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Yeah, hey, my question is about the new DePaul Arena, which it sounds like they're definitely going to build. I was wondering, like, why is it a good time to build something like that now when it seems like the city needs money for other things? Is that How does that rank in terms of priority? Well, um, you know, the tourism in the city of Chicago has been growing. Um, we see uh, tourism as a growth industry for the city of Chicago in the future, bringing new jobs and um, increasing revenue uh, for the city of Chicago through the number of visitors that will be coming in to attend conventions. Um, the DePaul Arena is not going to be built utilizing uh, public dollars. The d public dollars that have been allocated for uh, the development in general is for the construction of the headquarters hotel, which is a 1,200 unit hotel. Uh, uh, so it will be used for land acquisition for the hotel and the construction of the hotel and all of the soft costs related to it, the design. Um, and this is going to be good for the city because it's going to result in over 10,000 construction jobs for uh, residents and over uh, 2,500 permanent jobs, um, not to mention the money that will be generated from the hotel tax, the amusement tax, the sales tax, uh, parking tax, uh, all of which will be new net new revenue to the city. So I think sometimes you have to make an investment to get an investment or to get revenue that's going to be good for the city of Chicago. Thank you, Carla, for that question. Um, Alderman, um, tell us about the field house expansion. Well, at Low Park, um, Low Park is on the western edge of my ward uh, over on the 5200 block of Low. They had a very, very small field house, and we've been able to uh, expand that field house for the residents there. We're going to have a new gym, uh, updated uh, equipment and bathrooms and places for young people to play and, you know, do projects that one would normally do in a field house. So I'm proud to have been able to help the residents over there with something that they sorely needed. Great. Um, when is that supposed to open? Well, hopefully it will be finished in June. They've um, got the building up. The shell is, uh, you know, they've enclosed the shell, and now they're working on the inside of the building. Great, great. Um, we have another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Yes, good evening. I have a question about the uh, high-tech manufacturing lab that uh, has been in the news lately. Uh, I know that President Obama said the Department of Defense would contribute $70 million uh, to the Chicago Institute. So I just want to figure out, um, what does this mean really for Chicago in terms of jobs, and is this a good thing for, for Chicago youth who really want to get into this, this type of uh, business? Well, caller, I um, don't know the details of this uh, particular proposal. I know it was announced yesterday by the President, uh, Governor Quinn, and uh, Mayor Emanuel. I know it's going on Goose Island. I know it's a high-tech uh, uh, business that's going to generate lots of jobs, not just for Chicago, but also for the region and also the Midwest. Um, I think anytime you can be forward thinking and visionary about uh, the future of uh, jobs in the United States, you know, we're moving into it. We are not moving, we are in a technological age. And so these kinds of new uh, strategies for job development can only benefit Chicago and can only benefit uh, young people. And I think that the work that the mayor has done with the city colleges and some of the new programs that are coming online, uh, for example, we're bringing into the third ward a new program called U Media, which uh, helps youth uh, think about and also get involved in these uh, high-tech kinds of projects, uh, coding and 3D printing and all of those things that make uh, uh, Chicago a cutting-edge city. Um, we're going to connect those young people to future jobs like this. So I think that, it, that this benefits the city in the long run. Thank you, Carla, for that question. Um, so, is there any news you, you would like to share about City Council? Uh, City Council, I say that um, 
I think the biggest thing that I've worked on lately with my colleagues, Amaya Pawar and Michelle Smith, has been something called the uh, Council Office of Financial Analysis, which is a uh, office that's to help the aldermen get independent assessments about public-private partnerships, a review of the budget. Um, right now, we're in the process of trying to identify uh, the board that will sit on that. It's going to be composed of three aldermen and a couple of uh, outside experts, and uh, to select a staff that will uh, help us with those kinds of issues. And right now, we're in the process of working with our colleagues to get that in place. Great. Um, how did that pass? Passed unanimously, and I think it passed, um, what's this, February? It probably passed in November or December. I can't remember the exact dates. Uh, we have another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Hi, um, Alderman, I wanted to ask about the potholes. Um, this is probably the worst I've seen it since I got my driving permit 15, 16 years ago. And I just wanted to know like, what steps the city is taking to solve the problem and if we may want to consider, given sort of the harsh weather conditions that you know go on from time to time here, something aside from asphalt when it comes to, to, to you know, roads. Yes, um, that's uh, you know, a good question. Caller, I definitely agree with you that this is probably the worst we've seen it. And, you know, no wonder we've just been going through a continuous cycle of uh, cold weather, snow, freezing weather. Uh, and when any time you add to that mix uh, snow plows that have to, you know, clear our streets and uh, create more potholes, it's a hard uh, problem to get on top of. I will say that um, I think last week the city added three or four additional crews to try to address this issue citywide, you know, but uh, it's a problem. I mean, everywhere I go, no matter uh, uh, you know, whether I'm on the north side or today I'm downtown or on the south side of the city, potholes are everywhere. And I think uh, Chicagoans are going to have to understand the cycle of weather that we've been in um, and to give the city a little more time to address the potholes. Um, I would ask residents not just, not only when you see them, to call 311, but to also call your alderman's office so that they can get on top of it as well. Uh, potholes and actually garbage are a key pet peeve of mine and I ride around in my car with a notebook uh, and I think I send an email a day and a call a day to the man in charge of the, the pothole man in City Hall to make sure that the potholes in my ward are addressed. Thank you caller for that question. We have another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Hi, thank you for taking my question. Alderman, I was just curious, um, what's going to become of the schools that were closed? What's going to become of those buildings? Yeah, you know, um, I just testified, or staff, I, I, I gave my testimony on Monday to the uh, state committee that's overseeing uh, CPS and its uh, school closings and repurposing uh, committees. Um, and I have to say that uh, to a certain extent, I think that the criteria that CPS has put together has been good criteria in terms of uh, making sure that uh, community needs are taken into consideration, having MBE, WBE qualifications, um, uh, ensuring that these repurposed schools will not be used for charter schools, and I think that's the most important message for me, at least in my ward, um, that I was looking for and to uh, make sure that there's automatic approval for any uh, reuse of those schools. In my particular area, I have uh, two schools that need to be reutilized. One is Overton, and the other one is Parkman Elementary. Um, and I'm looking for proposals that will add to the vitality of our ward. So we're not looking for... Um, you know, other schools or, or charter schools. We want to see uh, projects that will benefit the community, whether they're mixed-use uh, developments uh, in terms of housing and retail or recreational centers for youth or 
um, social services that are not duplicates of other kinds of services in the ward, um, we're open. And we have uh, a Bronzeville Advisory Committee and other committees in the community that can help uh, craft uh, good proposals and review those that come to us. Thank you, Carla, for that question. You're watching Political Forum. This is a community service brought to you by CAN TV. I'm your host for today, Monica Torres Linares. This is a live and interactive show, so if you have any questions for Alderman Pat Dow, please call us at 312-738-1060. And I'm going to show everyone um, Alderman Dow's uh, contact information. Her ward office is located at 5046 South State Street. Phone number is 773-373-9273. The website is www.dowell4thirdward.com, and Alderman is also on Facebook and Twitter. Right. I'm a new person at Twitter, I'm, uh, and I'm loving it. <laughs> uh, uh, no, well, one of the things I did want to say to your calls was just to encourage them to uh, mark March 3rd as the start of early voting and to get out and uh, make your choices known as we go through this primary. Um, early voting is going to take place f until the 15th of March and in the third ward you can vote if you're a resident of the third ward you can vote at the Chicago B Library at 36 and State and if you want to go right outside the ward and be close you can also vote at the King Center, which is at 43rd and Cottage Grove. And if you work downtown, you can also vote at the Chicago Board of Election Office at 69 West Washington. So I just encourage people to exercise their choice. Thank you, Alderman. Um, you've been Alderman since 2007. How is this year different from the previous years? Well, you know, the, I think the first four years I focused on um, trying to uh, course correct uh, to make sure that this that our ward um, received all of the services that we were supposed to receive that we left no dollar that we were uh, supposed to receive on the table that uh, the city of Chicago departments um, put the proper investments in our infrastructure in our parks and in our schools um, now I'm focusing more on housing development and economic development. Um, unfortunately, because of the economy, um, we had a little bit of a slowdown with the economy and the recession, but I'm beginning to see more activity in our ward um, in terms of retail interests and uh, retail development. Thank you. I would say that's been the biggest, uh, the biggest change. I see also... Um, you know, I've been involved in doing a lot of legislation uh, with my colleagues on my own. We were able to pass the uh, vacant uh, property uh, ordinance, which requires uh, those buildings that are undergoing for vacant buildings that are in the middle of foreclosure, that the uh, services or the banks are required to secure them, to keep the areas clean. And so I'm real proud of that work as well. Thank you, Alderman. And you've talked about uh, focusing on uh, economic development and housing. Um, has is there any TIF funds that have been allocated to the third uh, to the oh, third ward? Yes, um, um, there are many TIFs in the third ward, and we've used a lot of our TIFs for um, uh, to help business development. For example, the cuisine of the Diaspora project that's currently underway. We use some TIF funding for the Bronzeville Artist Loft. Um, we've used TIF funding to provide grants to homeowners to do home repair on both the exterior and interior of their homes. We've had at least two or three rounds in each of the TIFs, um, uh, the Ashland and 40, 47th and Ashland TIF, 47th and King Drive TIF, the Bronzeville TIF, uh, Pershing TIF. We have done uh, projects like that. And we've provided uh, grants to some of our small businesses to help them with uh, their business improvements in their stores. So I like to use TIFs. I mean, the TIF money is generated by the residents of the area, and the money should be used for that purpose. We've also used TIF to um, improve uh, parks. We've built uh, uh, 
ex the extension to Low Park, for example, was TIF funded. At Fuller Park, we have uh, put in uh, a new gym and uh, uh, a fitness center. So uh, TIFs are important. Is our important tool that can be used not only for economic development but also for housing development and park development and also improvements to our schools. Thank you, Alderman. You mentioned about uh, the banks with the foreclosure crisis and the banks securing those properties. Um, are you, what was the, what's the purpose of, of that? Well, you know, we have, uh, you know, since the, with the housing uh, bust. Uh, a lot of people unfortunately have gone through a foreclosure process. Some people have just walked away from their their homes and uh, banks were letting these buildings just sit and once you have a vacant building on your on your block that's open and not you know not secured and you can uh, it can be a haven for squatters and um, bad elements, criminal elements, it's important to have those buildings boarded up and maintained so that the rest of the block can recover and that those buildings can then be put back into productive use. Thank you. Alderman, we've seen um, in the news that um, there's um, high crime in the Chicago area. How has gun violence affected the third ward? You know, I was just talking to a group of residents today. I We have a uh, new commander, Commander Terrence Williams, in the second district, and the second district covers most of the third ward. We have seen a tremendous reduction in everything from shootings to homicides to uh, burglaries to sexual assault, assaults, uh, car theft. Um, I do not see as much shooting now as we did last year, mm -hmm. but then again, it is winter, and really you can't judge a community until the summer really hits. So, um, you know, but I think that the um, changes that he's made in the patrol and uh, his work with community organizations, block clubs, and with some of our businesses has benefited our ward greatly. Thank you. Um, we have another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? My question is, isn't there... Hello? Hi, how are you, caller? Isn't there some way... Sorry, Alderman. Okay. I want to know, isn't there some kind of incentive to help with these buildings that are abandoned? Can't the mayor go in and help everybody somehow to get these buildings built, get it in, get more people into the area, get it more diversified. I mean, it's a shame because these are beautiful buildings that, yeah. you know, that are abandoned. And Thank you, caller. I can tell you, I can't speak for all parts of the city, but I can tell you in our ward we have used... Um, a lot of the federal money that's come down through programs like the Neighborhood Stabilization Project to take some of our abandoned multi-unit buildings and to uh, rehab those. So we've done uh, one on the 4800 block of Calumet. We've also done uh, one in on, the, on East 47th Street to take these old buildings and to put them back into productive use. On the um, two flats and three flats, we're seeing in our ward more private activity. We're seeing people come in and purchasing uh, distressed condominium uh, buildings because remember in my community we went through a huge condominium um, conversion project. Uh, many of those condos went under and we do see people now coming back purchasing um, those condos from banks, from services, and are uh, coming in and taking advantage and uh, repopulating the community. So I think um, uh, we're, that we're always challenged by the lack of uh, money, but I think in our ward we have utilized uh, uh, federal money, TIF money, neighborhood stabilization money to help with some of the rebuilding of our community. Thank you, Carla, for that question. Alderman, we are getting re ready to wrap up the show. Thank you for appearing on Political Forum. Thank you. Nice to meet you, too. Thank, thank you. you, Alderman. Same here. Uh, thank you, callers, for your questions. Our telephone technician for today was Steve. 
please join us for another edition of Political Forum next, next Wednesday. Have a good evening.